A total solar eclipse of the sun is one of nature's grandest events. And while the science is completely understood, there's something very primal feeling that you experience when the sun disappears at noon. The April 8, 2024 eclipse over the United States will provide an excellent opportunity to see this spectacular event of nature. Are you prepared to safely view it? In this video, we'll tell you all our tips to safely view an eclipse. Hi y'all, I'm Jeff. And I'm Becky. And together we're a cruising good time. One of our traveling passions is to go on trips to see solar eclipses. We've been on three international trips and one domestic U.S. trips. Everyone has been incredible. They're always spectacular. They're always wonderful thing to do. Today's video, we're going to give you a short explanation of what a total solar eclipse is. We're going to tell you why the April 8th, 2024 total solar eclipse is special opportunity for you. We will give you some of the guidelines we've picked up from seeing four different solar eclipses to make the most amazing trip possible for you. We're going to tell you how to set up for a safe and incredible day. And we'll tell you what else to look for. The sun's corona and the sun is obviously the star of the show, but there's a lot else to take in during a total solar eclipse. And we're going to discuss post-eclipse and how to make the most out of your experience. You know, our very first eclipse was in Mazatlan in 1991. It was, so it was an incredible time. We were in a condominium on the beach. Terrific eclipse, terrific vacation. It was a monster eclipse. It was six over six minutes long. We really had a good time, and it got us hooked for life on standing in the moon shadow. Uh, so the next one we did was, well, it was on a cruise. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course, the cruising good time has to go on a cruise to see an eclipse. In 1998, we saw the eclipse off the coast of Antigua uh, on board an RCCL ship. So, and so our next one, we were off to Austria. Terrific trip. Unfortunately, we had clouds at the last minute. We had a few clouds right there at the last minute. We got clouded out, uh, but we had a spectacular trip nonetheless, and we got to see a lot of the other phenomena that we talk, we'll tell you about to look for during an eclipse. And then, of course, the last one we saw was the big one in North America, United States, just a couple, few summers ago in 2017. We went up to uh, Stapleton, Nebraska to watch that one. And we based that choice on a lot of the criteria we're gonna talk about in this video of what to look for with weather, location, tourism. And we had really good luck there. The clouds broke and we had a wonderful eclipse experience. We had incredible experiences for every trip, but we really can't explain how amazing it feels to be in darkness in the middle of the day. It is absolutely, I gotta fully agree with Becky on this one because you, the science is completely understood. We know that the moon is passing between us and the sun, casting a shadow on it. But when you see it happen, it looks like a hole opens up in the sky. You can see why years ago, civilizations really thought it was pretty bad because suddenly the sun disappears into a giant hole in the sky. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to take in. Yeah, there were countries where um, some people lost their head because they didn't predict the eclipse. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty brutal. <laughs> A total solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the earth and the sun in just the right way that the moon's shadow is cast upon the surface of the earth. There's a lot of videos out on YouTube already about the physics of how an eclipse occurs. We're not going to get into that type of detail in this video. Suffice to say that you need to be in the umbra, which is a full moon shadow, to see the total solar eclipse. If you're in the penumbra, then you're just going to see a partial eclipse. So one of the reasons that the total solar eclipse over the U.S. on April 8th, 2024 is so special is there is not going to be another total solar eclipse in the United States until 2045. That is correct. And the, the 2024 eclipse is also a pretty long eclipse as far as eclipses go. It's going to be over four minutes and close to four and a half minutes in some areas which is a very long for an eclipse to happen. Do you want to tell us more about how the frequency of total solar eclipses? So on average, a to total solar eclipse will happen about once every 18 months. They're not as rare. A lot of people seem to think they are. But because the Earth's 70% ocean, a lot of them go unseen unless you happen to be on a ship in the right spot. For any given spot on Earth, the, a total solar eclipse will happen about once every 400 years. So it can be quite a while 
for an eclipse to pass over your house at any given time. So we have planned four total solar eclipse trips, and today we're going to utilize our experience to give advice on how to plan the best, most amazing trip for you. Absolutely. Number one thing is get on the path of totality. That's where the actual the umbra part of the shadow is touching the Earth. So it's different between a total eclipse being in the umbra and being outside of that is where you see a partial is almost literally the difference between night and day. <laughs> no kidding. It's it, You want to be in the path of totality. There's a lot of great places to find that on the Internet. Uh, there's a person that makes some great eclipse maps. Pardon me if I mess up your name, but his name is Xavier Hubert, and I have a link to his stuff below. And he has some excellent information on durations and eclipses and paths of totality. Right. Yep. And you touched upon the next subject is duration of totality. So you're going to look across that uh, map and you'll see that it has a band. At this center line is, is where you're going to have the very longest time of totality. It's not linear as you get away from this. So that's why Xavier's information is so great. You can look to see exactly how long a specific place will be in totality. And as you move away from the center line, uh, obviously it, it's going to decrease. It does. And, and like Becky said, it's not a linear function because we're moving two spheres in front of each other. So you can be several miles off the center line and still have almost just a couple seconds less totality than what you do at the center line. So for the next discussion on planning, we just want to talk about some of the issues they had in 2017. And that's why it's so important that you plan ahead. So for instance, in Missouri, you know, so many people were on the highway that the highway completely stopped down. And yep. although people weren't supposed to, they got out of their vehicles and they picnicked and they watched the eclipse from the road. Yes, yes. And we don't advocate stopping on the highway <laughs> to watch it, just to be crystal clear. But if you plan ahead and you're already at your destination, you don't have to wor be worried about being caught in a traffic jam. Right. And then in Nashville, they were expecting 300,000 visitors, and then they got over a million, and it led to a lot of problems within the city. So this is why you want to plan ahead and be able to be, be sure that you can be where you want to be as the moon starts passing in front of the sun. So based on past learnings, we recommend that you sleep at least the night before somewhere that's going to be in the path of totality. And if you can't, drive early in the morning. Get up at 5 six o'clock four o'clock in the morning get where you're going to go before the traffic is really bad so when you're selecting where you're going to view you need to remember that it's going to be like sunset 360 degrees around and sunrise 360 degrees around so it's really good if you can have a place where you have um, unlimited viewing on the horizons be sure that before eclipse day you have a full tank of gas you have a lot of water on hand that you have food, medicine, and of course, sunscreen. Another key thing to keep in mind for the eclipse viewing is the probability of cloud cover. And you need to research that as well because obviously if there's clouds, you're not gonna see the eclipse. So uh, the American Astronomical Society, we have a link below, do uh, have some forecasts for probability of cloud cover. And you should take that into account wherever you're gonna go see the eclipse. So one of the things I wanted to cover is that you can see total solar eclipses from a cruise ship. So if you take the cruise, they cover pretty much everything mentioned above. You're not going to have to worry about traffic, etc. You'll just have to make sure you get up early and find your deck space and stay there. Always have a member of your team there with proper sunscreen holding out where you're going to see the solar eclipse. Yeah, the nice thing about the eclipse, when we were there, they, the captain puts you right down on the center line. Uh, presumably, if there's a little bit of cloud, they, they can move a little bit in there and still maybe make the next port of call. Uh, but it's a great way to uh, see an eclipse. There's no doubt about it. It takes a lot of the worry out of the planning. So I've done some research on uh, looking at uh, Princess and RCCL, Carnival, Celebrity, uh, NCL, Hall in America, all the major cruise lines. I found two cruise ships that will be on the center line for the April 8th eclipse. That's the Emerald Princess, it's going to be doing a Trans Canal, and the Discovery Princess, which is going to be a Mexican coastal uh, cruise out of Los Angeles. They both have itinerary dates to be on the center line off the coast of Mazatlan for that eclipse, which is actually near the port 
point of greatest eclipse. So it's really a good place to go see it if you can still get on board. So if you have knowledge of a different cruise that's going to be viewing the eclipse, hey, please give us a comment below. So the number one thing to consider for your eclipse is safety. Absolutely. And we have a link below to the American Astronomical Society that has a link of approved, what they consider approved vendors that have different types of solar filters and glasses. There, unfortunately, are a lot of nefarious people out there that are looking to make a quick buck that are putting information or merchandise out there that is not up to standards. Don't risk your eyesight on it. Buy only from an approved vendor that has uh, quality merchandise. So one of the easiest things that most people use are these very stylish and fancy uh, eclipse glasses that you can buy online or at any museum's going to have them and all that. They, they block the sun's rays out. You can look at all the partial phases of the eclipse through these. And they're pretty easy to use, obviously. My favorite way to view an eclipse is with number 14 welder's glass, which is the darkest welding glass there is. It's hard to find because it's so dark. A lot of welders don't like it. But it is a great way to see the eclipse, and it's my preferred way to watch the partial phases. But you can get this from any welding supply store. I've bought several sheets of it online from some big welding supply stores. You can also buy filters. This is one that goes in a filter that goes on front of a pair of my binoculars that I have, 50 millimeter binoculars. It's got the same mylar in it that you would find in an eclipse glass. And this is really good to watch the partial phases as well. An important thing to keep in mind here, too, is there's also a lot of boneheads out there that are going to sell you filters that go on the back side of your telescope or on the eyepiece of your telescope or your binoculars. Do not buy those. You're magnifying the sun's rays into that little filter. Only use filters that go in the front of the binoculars or telescope. Important safety tip. <laughs> <laughs> So another thing to consider is taking the photos. So, you know, in our first solar eclipse, Jeff, I think that you got <laughs> a little busy taking photos and didn't enjoy the moment as much as you could have. Yeah. So a lot of people, there's going to be great photos online from professional photographers. Just have a great time. Absolutely. Take it in. It's a very emotional event. Like we said in the opening, enjoy the moment. Uh, enjoy everything there is to see during it. National Geographic is going to take great pictures of it. You can buy those online if you want one. So another thing that we were thinking for our, our next eclipse of is instead of photographing the sun, just having a camera set up that photographs everybody's reaction. That is excellent. And for the 2017 eclipse, I did that. I just took right about two minutes out. I took my iPad, just started it recording, just laid it flat on a table right there. Not so much to see the eclipse. But the audio on it is great because you can hear everybody talking about it. You can hear me calling out like one minute out, 30 seconds out. And then when it happens, everybody goes, oh, and it's just <laughs> really neat to go back and listen to that and how people chit chat and what's going on during the eclipse. And then as it uh, ends, at the as you get to third contact, it's really fun to listen to that as well. It ha captures all the emotion of the eclipse. So one of the things I loved when we watched the eclipse at Mazatlan is right as totality hit, you hear this giant, ah, from just up and down the beach. So that was a very cool experience. One of my favorite things to have for eclipse viewing is a blanket and a pillow. Just lay down and get comfortable for one of the most incredible experiences of your life. Yep, I agree with that, absolutely. It's just take it in, enjoy the moment. That's a, and that's the easiest way to do it, is just later you're not craning your neck trying to see it. <laughs> it's just very easy to do. So when we're set up, we are all set up and we are watching things right when we have first contact, when the moon first starts to get in front of the sun. And it'll almost look like the moon is eating the sun. And, and it'll go across. And that in itself and watching it is, you know, it is very exciting. And as it gets closer and the moon is covered more and more sun, the light is going to be doing uh, the light at the edges all around the horizon, 360 degrees around. The light's going to be going down. It's kind of like a 360 degree sunset, but there's something different about it. It's almost, it a, it's kind of an eerie feeling. It, yep. It's yep. different than a regular sunset or sunrise. And I can't tell you emotionally why, but it is different than witnessing those. So it's, yeah. 
And as it's getting close to totality in those last few minutes, like the wind is going to pick up, the temperature is going to start to drop. It may drop 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. The animals, like the cows, will start to go in. The birds will start heading home. Uh, the crickets will start chirping. Sure. Yeah. All this is totality, is brightest totality is approaching. Right. And that's part of what you want to take in beyond just what you see in the sky. There's a lot happening on the earth to, to look at it, too. Watch the uh, shadows from trees because they'll make little crescents on, their, on, the, on the ground, which is another great way to view partial uh, eclipsing. Is the is by looking at the shadow on the ground of the from the leaves on the trees, they'll look different. And then as uh, second contact occurs and totality begins, right as that happens, there's a phenomena called Bailey's beads, which is where the sun is coming through the uh, valleys between the mountains on the moon, and it'll make like some beads on the edge of it. And then finally, there's what's called a diamond ring effect, where it looks like a big diamond ring where the last little bit of sunlight is uh, removed by the moon, then you move into full totality with the where you can see the corona of the, the sun. So the sun has an 11 year cycle on solar activity and sp sunspot activity. And we're approaching where it's gonna be the apex of where the, these get higher. So this should be terrific viewing because you have a higher chance to see like solar prominences. Right, and the solar prominences looks like are, they're, they're red flares that you can see on the front, on the sun during totality there'll be like a little red bead inside the uh, at the edge of the moon inside the corona and it's really spectacular to see so we should get a lot of them with this eclipse because we're near the solar maximum another thing to watch out for in the sky are the planets you can actually see the planets during the eclipse and you can see some of the brighter stars for this eclipse coming up uh venus and Jupiter will both should be very easy to identify. Mars is going to be very close in there too. And we've got a real treat this time because there's a, a comet that was just recently discovered that's going to be near perihelion during the eclipse. So we may or may not be able to see that comet. Look for it kind of over in the vicinity of Jupiter when you see it. But I wouldn't waste a lot of time looking for the comet. Enjoy the eclipse while you got it. You can see the comet during other parts of the, of the, the calendar year. So another interesting phenomena for me is post-eclipse, and that's about people. The second totality is finished, some people are going to jump on the road, and there are going to be giant traffic jams. Even if you wait around a few hours, there will be huge traffic jams. Highly recommend that whatever you've planned for, just stay there, watch all of the eclipse finishing, and extra time at the site. Plan to do a barbecue, a picnic, whatever it is. Just don't plan to get on the road till several hours after all the eclipse is completed. I agree because we, we got caught in a traffic jam in 1999 driving into Vienna, Austria. And it just wasn't any fun to spend vacation sitting in a traffic jam trying to get it back into the city. So uh, plan ahead, just like you plan to get there. Plan on a way to get out and just take your time and know it's going to be crowded. So additionally, uh, there's going to be an annular solar eclipse that will be happening on October 14th, 2023. And that's a near total solar eclipse, if you want to think about it. The difference there is that the moon is a little too close to the earth, and it's not quite large enough to block out all of the sun. So you get what's called the ring of fire. You'll have a whole ring of uh, sunlight around it. Not safe to see with the unaided eye, but if you have filters, it's something to take in there. Plenty of maps about that. There's a spot of Texas just outside of San Antonio that's going to actually be on the center line for both the October and the April eclipses. So it's kind of special in that respect, too. Please give us a like, subscribe, and leave comments below. Thanks a lot for watching. There is more to come. Right there. That's it.